Hello everyone and welcome to Magical Me. I'm Jamie Mendez, spiritual intuitive and oracle here with my Moon Day oracle message for the world as a collective for the week of December 4th. So I have a few things that I just want to uh, really quickly announce. Lots of changes happening over here at Magical Me, all for the better. Um, so I'm going to do that before we actually get into the reading, but I'm going to take a few minutes and allow people to just connect. And I see we have a few people popping in already. Welcome Brenna, Leah, and Lynette. Thanks so much for joining, ladies. I know I'm a few minutes late, but uh, children, you know, nothing goes as planned ever with children. So hi, Amber. Hey, sweetie. Welcome. Hi, Hannah. Thanks for making it here, love. So how is everyone's moon day starting? It's been an intense weekend. I can, I don't know about all of you, but it's been a pretty intense weekend here. And while I was not affected, I almost don't even want to say this, but while I was not affected directly, I'm going to knock on wood. While I was not affected directly, um, <laughs> my house was, and people in my house were. And so of course, you know, it trickles down and we have to deal with that. But um, it was a very interesting weekend, uh, full moon happening on uh, Sunday, yesterday, along with Mercury and retrograde. Um, and so far, the weekend has been a lot involving vehicles, <laughs> which goes right hand in hand there with Mercury retrograde, you know, Mercury being the um, ruler over travel. So lots of times we have some issues in regards to uh, that when this happens, but things just that come up to light that need to be dealt with. So what actually happened this weekend without going into too much detail was lots of truth being revealed, lots of things in regards to vehicles that led to situations needing to come out to the light. So while it was good that these revelations are happening because it's kind of like, all right, so this is the point before we make it further and you know things just get completely out of whack. Um, it still was a little, it felt a little chaotic. I did my best to stay grounded and keep everybody around me grounded. So I hope that everybody else had uh, an easy time of it this weekend. Hi, Mandy and Lids. Welcome. Yay, you made it. And hi, Antonio. Welcome. I'm doing fantastic. How have you been? Glad you all could make it. We are master number 11 viewers. Loving that. Lynette says, I'm just gonna keep howling. <laughs> there you go. There you go. What out that wild primal nature? Howling might be better than roaring. <laughs> you know, I was really doing my best not to roar this weekend. Amber says, definitely did not had a lot of misunderstandings with work buddies. Yep, that happens. Misunderstandings, miscommunication. Mercury being that communication, travel, um, technology. Um, but again, Amber, an opportunity not to look at it in a negative light, but an opportunity to revisit how we communicate going forward and how we can avoid those sorts of misunderstandings going forward as well, okay? So, hi Susan, welcome. Hi Trista, thank you. How to let it all natural. Skits. Ain't, ain't nobody got time for all that these days. <laughs> it's been a crazy couple of days, so just left it. I just left it alone. So, but thank you for saying that. Hi, Jillian, sweetheart. Welcome. And Jillian, I have not forgotten about you, sweetie. I promise I have not forgotten about you. And I will be reaching out to you either this evening or tomorrow, okay? Hi, Christine. Welcome. Glad you made it. All right, so let me get into it then. Um, so lots of new stuff happening at, over here at Magical Me. Um, I have been like spirit ignited something within me, awoken something within me, and kind of propelling me to really, um, you know, get my, my services out there more for people. Um, you feel like more people now that we are transitioning into this new way of being where the end of this 2017 moving into 2018 a lot of people are starting to go through their own awakening processes hi Deborah 
Welcome, sweetie. A lot of people are starting to go through their own awakenings. A lot of people are feeling the, the tug and the pull of lower self and uh, higher self and um, the effects that come with that. And so the average person that is not spiritually aware, I mean, it can be pretty intense, mind blowing and feeling like you're almost going crazy. So I do feel like the need for me to step into light bearer, healer is like propelled even more so than what I ordinarily do. So that led me to really get myself into in, more involved in what I do and what I can offer other people. So I have officially opened um, my healing sanctuary. It is within my home. So those of you who are local to the Lehigh Valley area um, in Phillipsburg, New Jersey, or you know Pennsylvania border there, um, I am now booking in in-person sessions for Reiki healing. I also have something known as my personal Reiki, uh, I, I should call it my master healing sessions, um, which is Reiki like times 10. Um, I've got some other stuff that I do involved in that. Um, and I'm offering that as well as card readings in my home Fridays through Sundays. So I have posted a list of, you know, all my services are available. If you look on Magical Me, click on the services tab, you can see all of the services that I offer. And I'm also offering, for those of you who aren't nearby me, um, I'm offering distant healing sessions now, which are really, really neat um, because not only can we, you know, Reiki masters and, you know, anybody who is a Reiki too can actually send healing energy distantly. We do it all the time. Um, but I include or incorporate crystal grids as well. So you get a little bit of crystal healing in regards to that, as well as a lot of intuitive personal information um, or intuitive counseling, I should say. Um, in regards to your session. So if you aren't near me, don't fret. You can still get a healing session with me. We can connect via FaceTime, video chat, or just over the messages, uh, messengers, messages, messages, <laughs> just over those. And, um, you know, so there's always ways to work things out. So please definitely be open to considering that. If not with me, with someone else, if you feel your body telling you you need something, then please honor that, listen to that. Um, so that, um, of course my Spiral Temple is still going on, so open registration um, it will not be until June of 2018, unless something changes. Um, so just, you know, anybody who's been interested in getting involved in that, um, for all you ladies out there, that's a Goddess Temple School, that will be again opening up new registration in June, so. Hi Leanne, welcome sweetie. I'm just talking about what uh, Magical Me is doing the next couple of weeks and how I'm starting to launch some new things for everybody. Yes, Antonio, you let me know. Friday through Sunday, I have avail availability, so just reach out to me and message me, okay? Um, and anybody else, anybody who's interested in setting up an appointment, it's booking up quick. I put it out there just yesterday and I'm already booked into next week. So um, reach out to me, you know, and we'll work it out. Thank you, Antonio Blessby. Oh, Christine, you're such a sweetheart, honey. Thank you so much for that. Yes, I know, Jillian. I love you for that, sweetie. All right. Hi, Trinace. Welcome. Okay, so something else that's kind of brewing here for me in the works. And, you know, I'm so dedicated to the Goddess Temple and, you know, that I created that. It's something I wanted to create for a very, very long time. But, again, it is just working with women and so and then you know it's a year-long journey and the you know as you know just because it makes it difficult to bring people in and out of it you know halfway through it's impossible to catch people up so that's why I closed down the registration you know it's only open once a year um, but you know in the meantime people need help you know so what I wanted to do and what spirit is moving me to do and what one of my beautiful friends kind of chimed in and confirmed for me was I want to offer a monthly subscription group for a very minimal fee. Um, so I'm not quite sure yet how I'm gonna handle it, but for anybody who is interesting, um, interested, <laughs> tongue tied today, anybody who is interested, um, you know, I'll probably maybe either doing it through, um, you know, email subscription. Um, so you'll get like the, a, a monthly email with a video or a meditation or an audio track or something that you can do to you know help yourself energetically throughout the month um, and it'll be like a monthly long thing also yeah exactly Liz that's exactly what I'm gonna do blame it on retrograde 
or I may, like I said, it's still in the works. I haven't put it out there yet. Um, or I may actually open up a group on Facebook for people who decide to subscribe um, and I'll be able to connect with people one-on-one -on -one that way, not one-on-one, -on -one, but like, you know, group on one <laughs> that way and uh, get out whatever it is that I'll be sending out each month. It'll be something new, something different, and it will allow people to both men and women, because, you know, I'm dying to work with men as well because, you know, we need it. We need the fellows to be also in tune here. So. Um, if you are interested, just private message me and let me know so this way when I get everything created, um, I'll include you in the information so that you can see if it's something you definitely want to do, you don't want to do. Um, so again, that'll be like a monthly subscription-based, um, you know, kind of pay-as-you-go type of thing if you're interested. If you choose to stay, you stay. If you don't, then you leave at any time. Um, but just a way for people to, you know, get the information. It's like Spirit wants me to get it out there, and I'm trying to get it out there as best as I can, as quickly as I can. So I'm launching an Oracle card reading. I decided to take a break with the classes for January, or for December, and ev launch everything back up in January. Just because of the holidays, it's, it's busy enough. Um, so Oracle card reading course, it is online for anybody who is interested, you learn from the comfort of your own home. It's a four week online course and you do become a certified Oracle card reader after you're done. Um, and everybody who sits there and says, well, I can't listen to my intuition. I can't meditate. I'm gonna put money on it that I can get you meditating. And I have tons and tons of people that can speak from experience. Um, so yes, yeah, so that's a great way to start out your spiritual awakening, tapping into your own power, which is what 2018 is really encouraging us to do. All about coming into our power, into our truth, and honoring our magic and putting it to work. Um, so absolutely doing that. That will be launching the first week of January. Also, Reiki Level 1 in person. Unfortunately, I am not one of those people who teaches or believes that Reiki should be taught distantly because of the attunement process. I only teach it in person. So I will be teaching for those of you in my area. Um, January 20th, I want to say, the events are created on my page. Reiki Level 1 offered in my home. Okay. So if anybody has any questions about anything, everything is posted on Magical Me events, services. I've even got some offers going on right now. Yule readings, um, that's a great way to find out what is you what are you being guided to release and let go of as you birth the new in this new year, this new way of being, um, and what gifts are being um, coming into your life or being bestowed upon you. I'm offering that reading for $15 for the month of December only. My 2018 12-month year-long reading, I am offering that for $45 as opposed to my usual $65 for the month of December only. And also, I'm actually giving away a 2018 12-month card reading to one lucky person. There is a giveaway created on Magical Me. It is an event. Um, you can check that out. Look at what you need to do in order to be um, entered into the drawing. And on Christmas Eve, I will be announcing the winner of that reading. Really awesome reading. Okay? All right, I think I got it all out. <laughs> Let's see. And I'm going to check these comments before I can get started here. Um, let's see. Hi, Barbara. Welcome, sweetie. Hi, Candace. Are you lucky, Candace? Are you local to me, sweetie? Then you are indeed lucky. Oh, Lynette. Thank you, sweetheart. Hi, Judy. Welcome, sweetie. I'm so glad that you made it. Oh my God, and congratulations. Judy has been manifesting and working on trying to get herself her, the perfect home, and she did. So congratulations, she's been busy moving. So very exciting time. Um, hi Lauren, welcome sweetie. All right, all right, so let's get into the reading. Uh, for those of you just first time ever tuning in, welcome, I hope you enjoy yourself. Grab a cup of tea, grab a cup of coffee, sit down, and just, absorb. That's all you have to do. Um, so Moon Day is the ancient name for Monday and it is a time where this day of the week is actually connected to the moon and all things that pertain to the moon which include 
divination, which includes using your intuitive abilities to discern guidance for your highest and greatest good, which is exactly what I do. I use my intuitive abilities combined with my oracle cards to discern a message for all of us for our highest good, nothing negative ever, to help us get through the energy of the week. And then I take it a step further after that one card is done. I pull another card from my mudra deck and I will explain mudras in a few moments. Um, and I use the mudras to help us take our power into our own hands, literally, and help to bring forth or step through the energy of the week um, all within our own, like I said, within our own means. It's a way that we can actually do the work as opposed to just hearing it and knowing we've got to, you know, try to get through the week in this way or, you know, whatever guidance comes through, the mudra and the guidance goes hand in hand. Thank you, Trista. Oh, Judy. Yes. Oh, thank you, sweetheart. I'm glad. All right. So here we go. So the deck that I'm still working with, I was working with it on Friday. We have master number 22 viewers right now. Master Builder. Um, Earth Wisdom Oracle. And this is by Barbara Moore. I really like this deck. It, um, I'm very drawn and connected to the ancient Gaelic and Celtic cultures and the way of the Druids. Avalon, all that beautiful energy. Um, it has crystals and plant information in here for each card. So, and I'm sorry about all the noise. I've got my monsters at home. Okay. So let's see. What guidance does Spirit have for December, the week of December 4th already? And again, I guess, yes, I see it. Um, it is Blessed Sight. It's hard to see. I know everything is backwards for you guys. Um, so it says Blessed Sight. The number is a 28, where it looks out to be a number one. Also, 28 is a 10, So, but if you break that down, it's a one. So 10s are all about something coming to, um, coming to the end. It almost like you know, if you think in terms of tens, um, like in typical tarot or traditional tarot, the ten in those decks is usually like the end of the journey. Um, and sometimes something destructive or um, very ending, like finalizing or major changes and things falling away. Um, also, I, I'm not 100% sure, but it might be associated with the death card in tarot as well. And it's about coming to the end, literally, but like a necessary ending. Something that has to give way in order for something new to be birthed. So one is the number of new beginnings. It is the number of rebirth and starting over. So this week, and especially coming in off this crazy super full moon, Mercury retrograde, and God knows what else, what other planets have been acting, you know, going in whatever directions. Um, you know, I'm not an astrologer by any means. I don't claim to be. Um, but definitely, it, it, I can see from what I was talking about this past weekend, a lot of truth has been being revealed. Things have finally been coming to the light. And I even said this the other, I said this yesterday as we were looking for a pair of missing car keys. Um, I said, all is revealed in the light of the moon. And that is exactly what the moon does. The moon is that re revelation, that revealing what is in the shadows and hidden. Um, so lots of truth coming up to the surface. Yes, Candace, lots of truth coming up to the surface. And it may not be in the best way. You might not think like truth, like this is what I've been waiting for type of truths. It could be truths that seem a little bit hurtful, um, devastating but necessary and that's the thing I think that we should all remember and that's where the blessed sight comes in. Blessed sight means the gift of seeing, the gift of illusions being removed that would cloud our judgment, that would cloud us from seeing things what they truly are so that up until this point we hadn't been seeing truth, we hadn't been seeing the situation as it really is. It was definitely not what it seemed to be. So now we can find ourselves being gifted the blessed sight, 
which means that we are now going to be able to see through deception. We are going to be able to see through fear. We are going to be able to see through blocks. And we are going to be able to see glimpses of our own power, of our own truth, our own authenticity. I can resonate with that as well. Like I said, something shifted for me this last week. Of course, you know, just when you think, you know, you're, you're, you're a spiritual teacher, you do your things. And again, we are always in that role of student where we again get boosted and we have to go through a process of learning all over again. So, you know, I'm not like any, I'm not dislike anyone else. I'm the same as you. I all, I go through the same as you. Um, we all go through the same things, maybe differently, but we still do. So I myself have had epiphanies this past week. Lots of them, not just one, <laughs> lots of them. And I feel different. My daughter even woke up today and my daughter is usually, she's not a morning person, so getting ready for school in the morning is just, it's just probably my karma, I guess, from some other life, maybe my own childhood, I don't know. But um, in the morning, uh, she actually was like, huh, it's gonna be a great day. I feel completely different. I feel like something shifted and I'm like, <laughs> something's happening. So absolutely this week, everybody, the things that seem that, and I, and that, and I want to, I want to really stress this because I know people who, and myself included, have been witness to my own things in my house. Um, things have been coming up to the surface that are not resonating with truth or that were hidden from truth. And these things that are coming out, they might be difficult and it might really seem like, why is this happening to me? And it might feel like a huge setback, but it really isn't. And I know that's hard to hear, but if you can allow yourself to go through whatever process that you're going through, if, if it's a sad thing, then allow yourself to feel sad, allow yourself to cry, allow yourself to be angry, but then let it go, release it, don't indulge in it, don't you know, wallow in it and stay there. Then try to shift your perception to see that this was a necessary truth. This had to happen because it wasn't serving me anymore. By me being in the dark from the situation, it was hurting me, it was poisoning me. So now I'm coming to a place of blessed sight and it is just that, it is blessed because it does allow you to break free from things that were not true from things that were not polite or good for you. It allows you to be set free. So thank the opportunity, thank the revelations and the truth that is happening, and then move forward on your journey. But again, I don't want people to think that it's we're supposed to be, you know, sunshine and butterflies and fluffy bunnies every day, all day, something happens, it's no big deal. I can fly because I like unicorns. No, that's not what I'm saying, not at all. I think that shadows are very, very important in our own personal evolution. And I think that um, a lot of focus is out there on being positive and people take that and run with it. And we do mean be positive, but at the same time, that doesn't mean you got to go through what you got to go through. You are supposed to grieve. You're supposed to feel loss. You're supposed to feel sad, but then you're supposed to overcome as well. Not stay there, not let it break you and not let it deter you. Okay. So this week, you're being a given a gift, as difficult as it might seem. Remember that the blessed sight is indeed you seeing truth, you seeing clearly. So keep that in the back of your mind. The crystal in this card, I want to say, um, because it doesn't look anything like what it's supposed to look like, but um, it's supposed to be, I do believe this is supposed to be rhodonite, if I'm not mistaken. And rhodonite is a beautiful pink crystal. It's not within reach or else I would grab one and show it to you. It is the crystal of the higher heart, of divine unconditional love and compassion, and um, also that self-nurturing. So it's like rose quartz on steroids, if you will. It's like the higher, higher level of, of a rose quartz there. So again, it's called rhodonite. And I love that stone because it brings in divine, unconditional love and compassion. So it is at it is at your fingertips if you if you need it is basically what the crystal in this card is suggesting. Um, and you can literally see like the rhodochrome the rhodonite right at her feet. 
um, as she is turning her face away from the situation and kind of like walking forward anyway. So the rhodonite, if you can get to it, if you can get rhodonite around you anywhere, it can be a little bit more of a pricier crystal. If not, rose quartz will do the trick. It brings in that compassion that you need as you're going through a situation. It also brings in the self-love that you need to acknowledge your own self-worth and see through whatever situations may be going through or, or knowing that these situations may have happened or fallen away or fallen apart because you are worth more than that. And it will help you remember that. So it's a magical, beautiful stone. So indeed, Indeed, Trista, this is a beautiful card, a beautiful message, and a beautiful shift in energy in our message for this week. So I hope that resonates with all of you. I hope that you can take away something. Remember, the, the, the reason I do this card is so that in the beginning of the week, we have a little bit of a heads up. And when you move through the week, when situations arise, because it's likely that they will, you remember and you know that, you know what, this is, this is what that this is what spirit said this week and I don't need to fall into this um, negative cycle and pattern because of a situation that happened I can just accept it for what it is and yes allow myself to be upset and sad or even for those of you on the flip side this might be you coming into your truth this might be you coming into your power and you starting to see things for what they really are from for within yourself and again Rhodonite also assists with nurturing your self-worth. Divine, unconditional love for all, even those situations that have wronged you, harmed you, people who have done you wrong, um, forgiveness. And that is also what Rhodonite brings in. It's the higher heart, the heart of source, if you will. Okay? All right, everybody. I'm going to check out some comments as I, right before I get back into the next part of the reading, which is the mudra. So let's see what I missed. I tried to kind of keep up with them as I was going. Leanne says, those cards sound lovely. Oh, thanks, sweetie. Candace, my husband left on Friday out of the blue and I'm done. And spent, oh my goodness. Ooh, yeah. Um, that's some truth being revealed. And you know what, honey? Uh, I'm very sorry for you. And I absolutely, like I said, allow that process. Go through it, girl. Let it grieve. Get it out. But at the end of the day, and I'm assuming that you mean he left like left for good. Okay, so if I'm misinterpreting, I'm sorry. Um, but my heart goes out to you. But just know that this is him or your, even your highest self doing you a favor because what doesn't serve what doesn't resonate with your truth it's got to go all right so find your strength and your power and your fire in that and allow that instead of it allowing it to destroy you allow it to nourish you and nurture you and grow you into the direction that you're meant to go in sweetheart Brenna says it makes sense with my birthday this week, my personal year of new beginnings. Well, happy birthday, Brenna! If I don't get to if I don't get to speak with you, but um, yeah, absolutely a great start for you. Hi, William. I saw you popped in. Thanks for being here. Yeah, I know, Candace. Ugh, but you are supported. Don't ever forget that you are absolutely supported, and you have divine help. And remember, forgiveness is key. You might not be there right this moment, but just keep it in mind, okay? Michelle says, I can definitely resonate. Oh, good. <laughs> Trista. Leanne says, today's energy has been quite feisty. Ooh, feisty. Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. I, can, I didn't think about that, but yes, I can see how that played out. And I remember situations happening today where I was like, bite your tongue, Jamie, bite your tongue. And then I, uh, I kind of playfully, um, I was cheeky, to say the least. I was cheeky, but in a playful way versus a disrespectful or an angry way. Um, and so it allowed me to take my power in that situation and not let it affect me. It's like I read, I think I shared something too about retrograde. Mercury might be in retrograde, but that doesn't mean I am. I'm moving forward. So... Same thing with any situation, person, um, thing that might, you know, break you down for a second or put you like somebody cuts you off or your boss is nasty or kids lose car keys, things like that. Um, 
Mercury's in retrograde. They're in a bad mood. They're being nasty. But it doesn't mean that it needs to affect me. It doesn't mean that it needs to stop my my fun or you know my day or my magic. I'm gonna keep going with it. Ten card in, in the tarot is the Wheel of Fortune. Okay, it's been forever since I touched a tarot deck. Um, so thank you for that. But I know there's 22. <laughs> All right, um, all right, so I, get, I read all of these. Yes, always, we can always use some increased self-worth, Judy, always. Lauren says self-nurturing is a thing I need to keep in mind for sure, absolutely. You know, we go through life thinking that, you know, it has to be all about our children, it has to be all about our spouse, but that is so false because how can you give anything to anybody else if you aren't first giving to you? We're not taught that it is okay to be a little selfish, that it is okay to take first some for me, and then I have some to give to you. That is very important, okay? Oh, happy birthday, Susan! Oh, I didn't know that it was your birthday. Facebook didn't tell me. Well, happy birthday, sweetheart, and yes, powerful blessings. All right. Oh, Candace, good for you. Keep it up, sister. Keep it up. All right, so mudras. For those of you who do not know what they are, first time ever seeing this. So mudras are ancient hand symbols or movements. Um, kind of like they're from, I should say they're from ancient Tibet, probably older than that, but we can date them back as far back as ancient Tibet. The ancient Tibetan monks actually used to use them. They are still used worldwide, um, you know, to this day. They are ancient hand movements, symbols. I'm sure you have seen them before, mudras, um, that we use in order to, you know, with, combined with, I should say, breath work and breathing, we use them to channel and focus energy into certain places in our body, in our physical body, in our emotional body, in our energy body, and in our mental body. We use that energy to break through any barriers or blocks, to send energy to um, places that need a little bit more um, nurturing and vitality, to physical ailments that we need to overcome. They assist and really have been used, like I said, for so long because of their many benefits. And if you don't believe me, work with them for a week. You'll see. So it's really like, yoga positions and what they what yoga does for our body but with your hands so literally it's about taking your power into your own hands so the deck i work with has chakra and mudra cards in it and it's called mudras for awakening the energy body by allison d nicola really really awesome so what is going to happen how this works oh you're welcome susan as i pull a card and the mudra that comes out, I ask to set the intention for a mudra to assist us in getting through the energy of the week. That kind of goes hand in hand with the message that we receive with the oracle. So we do this together. I do this with you. It's very simple. It takes like two minutes. And I'll walk you through it. And then I'll take a picture afterwards and post it on Magical Me so that you can save it to your phone or your tablet, wherever you watch this on, and take it with you. And so if a situation arises throughout the week where you feel like you suddenly need it, you need to do it at work, if you maybe need to do it in your car, maybe you need to do it at home, um, wherever it may be, you have it readily at your fingertips. I'm telling you, you will not be disappointed. And if nothing else, a mudra will ground your energy because you are breathing with it and it really just takes your body and your energy from being all up here to bringing it back down into your into your body and anchoring you down into the earth okay so I'm gonna set the intention and ask spirit to give us a mudra that goes hand in hand with this week's moon day message for our highest and greatest good of course interesting card so it says fluidity and it is the matya mudra very simple one and this one is 
or the color of being orange just shows us that it's very connected to your sacral chakra. Your sacral chakra is the orange energy colored chakra. I don't know if it's literally orange, but we show it as orange down beneath your navel where your reproductive system is. And this is your creation center. This is also the area of your inner child. So when you feel like a wounded child in a situation or you, you um, step into the role of victim, like Candace, your situation could really easily have put you into a place of victim, anger, he did this to me, he caused that. You know, stepping into that victim role is actually um, counterproductive. It's actually blocking, it's, it's part of ego. So instead it allows you to, when you are sending energy to your sacral chakra, it allows you to heal that inner child or the wounded child and bring you into a place of um, you know, rising above, if you will. But it's also your creation center, your sacral chakra. So this is where your passion comes from, literally. And this is where your um, creative passion comes from. So, you know, that need to make something, create something, be it baking, coloring, painting, dancing, writing, um, putting something into action, this is where that comes from, from that chakra center. So we want that to be healthy and unblocked. So this is what um, this mudra is going to assist with, but also it assists with inner refreshment, so feeling rejuvenated, emotional ease, and nourishment, which is exactly what we have been talking about. Nourishing ourselves this week as we come into this time of power and truth. It releases muscular tension on a physical level and muscular contraction. So if you're feeling like, you know, kinks in your muscles or in your back or anything, um, it also supports joints and eases inflammation. It cultivates emotional fluidity and calmness. So it allows you to go with the flow of a situation and remain calm versus um, fight a situation that's happening, whether you want it to or not. Um, and Candace, hope you don't mind, I'm using you for this because you're the perfect example. Um, and I'm, you know, again, your situation isn't great, but it's the perfect example of how not to be, how not to allow a situation to stop you up versus allow you to flow with the changes that are occurring in your life and remain from in a calm place and act in a calm place. And that doesn't mean that you can't be sad or upset, um, but definitely not go cray cray, <laughs> okay? <laughs> so, um, and it, that's, a, that's, a, that's a situation in a life that could send many of us there, okay? So strength, love, and healing to you, sister girl. So how we're going to do this one is you will place your right palm, we're gonna do this together right now. You place your right palm over the back of your left hand. Okay, so like this. Keep all of the fingers stacked while extending the thumbs out to the side. So literally it's like they become one and then you extend your fingers, okay? And then you hold the hands with the fingers extending outward away from the abdomen. So it's gonna end up down like this outward away from the abdomen okay drop your shoulders straighten your back close your eyes and take a deep breath in through your nose and as you release blow the energy out of your mouth focusing and channeling that energy into your sacral area into your abdomen or your pelvic area Take another deep breath in through your nose and release. One more deep breath in and release. Focusing and channeling, directing the energy into your sacral area. And you can say, gentle waves of ease flow through my mind and body. Gentle waves of ease flow through my mind and body. One more time. Gentle waves of ease flow through my mind and body. And so it is. And you can open your eyes. And that's it. That simple. How did that feel? I know that everything just got suddenly very silent. 
and quiet <laughs> around me. So I feel like everything just comes right back down into your body, into centering yourself and calming you down. And you should at least feel that. Work with this throughout the week. It's going to assist you in flowing and transitioning and nourishing yourself, all right? And any situation that arises and you start to feel like you're, you're about to lose it or you feel yourself ready to react, remember the mudra. Go back to that. Literally, save this. I'm gonna take a picture, post it on Magical Me, save it to your phone so you have it at your fingertips at the drop of a dime when you might need that, okay? All right, everybody. Oh, you are so welcome. And I hope that your situation just continues to flow positively for your highest and greatest good canvas, okay? All right, everybody. Thank you so much for being here, tuning in, being patient, listening to everything that I have to share and say. I hope that everything that I do say helps or resonates on some level. And I hope that you continue to evolve, to grow, and to step into your bliss this week, all right? Love and magical blessings, and I'm going to see you back here on Fortune Friday, live at 5.